Well, right now I am on the island of Guam. And uh, this is a place that has a very uh, deep and, and rich and interesting history. Just take a look at where I'm at right now. Right now I am on the southern end of the island and uh, we are overlooking a place called Umatak Bay. And what is significant about this place is that in 1521, the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan set foot on the island of Guam for the first time. Now, later on, in the mid 1600s, Guam would become a colony of the Spanish. And uh, right here is one of their forts. I guess one thing that I forgot to mention is the name of this place. Uh, this is Fort Soledad, and uh, as you can imagine, it's up here on this high point and guards the entrance to the bay uh, here on the, the southern part of Guam. Now, Guam would change hands several times. After the Spanish-American War, uh, the U.S. would take possession of Guam. And after the attack on Pearl Harbor, well, the Japanese attacked Guam and they took occupation of it. The one group of people who were constants uh, throughout all of this change on Guam were the Chamoran people. And during the Japanese occupation, they would suffer greatly. Now, under the Japanese occupation, the uh, Chamoran people here were essentially used as slave labor uh, by the Japanese, building uh, concrete bunkers and emplacements and moving artillery and uh, just anything that had to do with manual labor. It was quite horrible for the indigenous people here. And uh, as the Americans were closing in, well, the Japanese kind of adopted this scorched earth policy. And on the 15th of July, not far from here, at uh, a cave that I unfortunately couldn't get access to, there were 25 men and five women who were rounded up, put into this cave, and the Japanese threw uh, grenades in and uh, shot these people. A few of them survived. And the next day, the Japanese commander of this area picked out 30 of the tallest and strongest men of the village and led them up this path where I'm going right now. Well, I'll tell you what, the view up here is something else. This area right here, kind of along the, the crest of this ridge line, is known as Faha. And on July 16th of 1944, as I mentioned, as the Americans were bearing down on Guam, and as this area was, was being bombarded in preparation for the invasion, those 30 men that I mentioned were brought to this very site. And using grenades, and bayonets, and rifle fire, were murdered by the Japanese right here. They have a memorial here to the men who died in the Faha massacre on July 16th that, that tells people who visit here what happened. It says on July 16th, 1944, when it was apparent to the Japanese 
that the invasion of Guam by the U.S. Armed Forces was imminent, they assembled 30 men and force marched them to this site called Faha. They were selected among the 50 biggest and strongest men in the village. They were told that the Japanese wanted all the big men from Marizo to help them work. They were put in a trench and were unmercifully grenaded and machine gunned to death. There were no survivors. The Japanese must have feared that these big men with their awesome strength might rebel. Alright, well uh, that was just a little bit on the Faha Massacre here in Guam. You know, in any armed conflict, there, there's three sides. There are the two enemy combatants. But the one side that typically gets left out of the narrative are the civilians. And it's arguable that they are the ones who really suffer the most. Uh, there was the, the massacre that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of, of this walk. Uh, there's the, the Faha Massacre. Uh, north of me on a, a military uh, piece of property that I can't access, there was another massacre called the Finna Cave Massacre. And these people didn't ask for it, they didn't provoke it, but uh, found themselves caught up in this, this awful conflict. Now, that wasn't the end of the story. After it was discovered what happened here, there was a rebellion. <laughs> and the, the locals uh, took up arms and overpowered the local Japanese and killed a lot of them. So uh, there, there was some retribution to be had after the, uh, the Faha massacre here. But uh, anyway, just uh, another one of the many tragic stories in World War II that uh, you don't really get in the history books.